Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. I thought I'd do this Bitcoin update video today as we have some very interesting price action coming in. And this is really just following on from what I said in the last video where my analysis really hasn't very much changed. But uh, we can fine tune a little bit the long term targets and just reiterate the kind of bearish sentiment that I have been having for a very long time. That's across crypto, that's across stocks, that's across real estate and many other asset classes. But we are just going to be focusing in on Bitcoin in today's video. All right. So in the last video, if you remember, we spoke about potential resistance coming in around 25.5K. That was based on a Camarilla pivot, which we'll, we'll bring that up in just a moment. But let's just home in on this first of all. So we have found our top, obviously, at 69K. And we spoke at length about why this was a five wave top. Yeah, that's looking at it from an Elliott Wave point of view. We had five major waves from the roughly 10 year history of Bitcoin. It had completed a five wave move. And as such, we needed a reasonably sized correction. Now, typically, when you get a five wave parabolic move up in Bitcoin, what we have seen in the past, and it's only occurred on maybe three occasions, we get at least an 80 to 90 percent drawback drawback. OK. Now that's, I know there's going to be an argument, well, Bitcoin has, uh, you know, it's it's kind of made a name for itself. It's more involved in society now. And so we shouldn't expect the same drawbacks that it had in the past. Well, actually, it's still moved in a very irrational way, a parabolic fashion, which is very unhealthy, unnatural. And we can still expect it to come down in dramatic fashion also especially when you've got an economic backdrop which is also weak which is also struggling with inflation so we can expect in my opinion serious pullbacks still okay let's not forget 69k an 80 percent retracement on that would bring us down to this point here which is around 13k whilst a 90 percent retracement brings you down to around 6.3k all right so keep those two numbers in mind they are very important figures all right. So looking at this, this is the downward pitchfork that I'm following. It's a modified shift pitchfork with our first, second and third pivots. And we're following the pitchfork pretty nicely. I spoke about a potential bit of confluence with this upward move coming in to the upper warning line. Unfortunately, that has not materialized. And that is because of a very important indicator. That is the 200 week simple moving average, which we'll bring on in just a moment. But the idea is we were seeing this as a flat pattern. This was a pretty aggressive move to the upside, which would have caught a lot of people out. This move has been since November 2022. It was looking like, you know, Bitcoin maybe started to become bullish once more. But my concern was using Elliott Wave, we could see this was a three wave move up, a three wave move down. And subsequently, any five wave move to follow can very simply be part of an expanded flat or a running flat. But taking out this high makes it an expanded flat. And that's what I was looking out for. That was the cautionary bit of price action that I was looking out for. And I believe that it's going to find resistance at this point. I think we come down from here. But I'll give more information on that as we go further into the video. So just bringing on some Elliott Wave sequences, actually. So we're looking at the bigger picture as a WXY. So three waves down to make you W. We're then looking at this as the X wave. And then we come down for the Y wave, targets of which we'll discuss in just a moment. We can then break this down. So for this W wave, we have an ABC. So this is your A wave, this is your B, this is your C. So typically a WXY is basically two corrections joined by an X wave, which in itself is also a corrective pattern. Yeah, so this is your first correction, ABC. We've then got a new corrective pattern, which again is an ABC flat, expanded flat. And then we're looking for another corrective sequence, which it's not possible to predict, but we're looking for a corrective move down and we can talk about potential targets of where we expect that to come down to. But that's what I'm expecting to form another wave down, a corrective move to make this Y wave. OK, so further breaking down the yellow wave analysis, we can look at, as I said, ABC expanded flat and then we can also break this down here. So the C wave is typically five waves. Yeah. So in an expanded flat, so you've got a three, three, five. OK, so just to label the final wave, one, two, three, four, five. We can if we just quickly zoom in on the hourly, we can see or well, four hourly is sufficient. It looks like one, two, three, four, five. Now, there will be shouts for this being a more 
expanded looking fourth wave where we've got a one two three and then a fourth wave which is an a b c which i very much doubt for a few reasons i think the wave four will be completely disproportionate to the wave two in terms of um in terms of time really uh and then the, the if this was an a b c the b wave is looking very irregular indeed b waves typically are pretty long and drawn out rather than sharp and impulsive looking like that so i'd much rather label that as a wave five uh so yeah as i say for those reasons from an elliot wave point of view from a probability point of view this is looking like a finished move as a one two three four five which is a c wave which completes this x wave Okay, and there are many reasons for resistance around this point, which will be coming to many horizontal levels of resistance in and around that point. Okay, so that is all the Elliott wave sequencing labels that we've got in this video. Um, now, just to fine tune the kind of analysis for why we're finding a bit of resistance at this point. So I think the next thing we can probably discuss would be our camera pivots. Let's just take off these Elliott wave counts just to tidy up the chart a little bit. Bringing on our pivot lines, and we'll start with the weekly. The weekly, let's just remind ourselves how crucial the weekly Camarilla pivots have been over the last few years. Okay, so essentially it's the R3, R4 or S3 and S4, which I've basically highlighted in these darker shades here, uh, or bolder lines I should say. They're typically the lines that the price action will respect. Okay, so back here in 2018, so when you're on the weekly time frame each one of these data ranges will represent a year okay so here for 2018 we found support for the s4 subsequently we went into 2019 finding resistance at the r4 hovering around the r3 before closing just beneath the r3 subsequent year of 2020 resistance at the r3 support of the s3 and we absolutely exploded that year yeah strong bull market subsequent year to be honest it wasn't respecting the camera pivots too well it was just consolidating it was a little it was a general it slightly hovered up to make its all-time high at 69k uh, but the concern was to finish the year to be honest it finished just above the r4 okay so you then go into your subsequent year and you can see how we held the s3 bounced and then we came all the way down and we actually used the s4 as resistance and we closed beneath the s4 for that reason for this year we were looking for resistance at either the r3 or r4 now i mentioned the confluence that we could see with the upper warning line of this downward pitchfork as well as the r3 and for that reason i thought there was a potential shout for a move up to maybe 27k maybe even as high as 29k with a quick wick to the upside and then ultimately closing with a weekly candle close beneath this level okay however it's not materialized okay the r3 i would still say is acting as resistance but it's the 200 week moving average which has really kind of truncated this move up and it's not allowing it to push any higher through it okay it's acting as very firm resistance it's a very powerful indicator the 200 week simple moving average and it is standing firm we'll pull it up in just a moment but first of all let's run through the camera pivot so this is the weekly so the r3 sitting at around 25 and a half k that's your overhead resistance that we're just struggling with at present then we can go on the daily okay so the daily time frame each time range now is a month okay so we can see here this is our resistance again, R3 resistance right here. So these camera pivots are incredibly useful. And if you want to know how to pull them on your chart, look at my description where I explain how to do that. So yeah, R3 resistance. Now we're just, we've come down. We're just finding a little bit of support the S3. Ultimately though, I think the way things are looking, we're going to break this down further. Who knows, we could even finish this month beneath the S4. But as you can see, another this is another point I want to, show here we've got resistance on the daily camera pivots and weekly camera pivots all coming in around this 25k mark combining that with our 200 week simple moving average so if we just take these off just a moment these camera pivots and just take a look at our we'll take a look at the 50 and the 200 because they're obviously both very useful so there we go so and then we want the weekly time frame and we'll take off everything but the cam uh, the moving averages so the black line is our 200 the blue line is our 50 so the black line as you can see wonderful support 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 and then 
it started to act as resistance okay i hear i would say it was weak resistance you can see we went through it but it wasn't like a firm rejection as soon as it touched it we actually went through it for a few weeks in fact before spending an awful amount of time beneath it altogether and now coming back to it it is acting as firm resistance you can just tell you've got those big sell orders anything that comes near the 200 week simple moving average that is a big trigger to sell by smart money okay and as you can see it's coming down the reason i've left the 50 on they say and it's not an indicator i would particularly use but there will be some people using this strategy uh and we call it a, a death cross when the 50 becomes comes beneath the 200 week simple moving average okay so here it failed ultimate bull rally uh but here for the first time we're getting that cross and we're seeing that weakness now as i say it's not an indic this is not an indicator that i trade this crossover but it is going to add further weight to the bearish sentiment okay so just taking off those moving averages next thing i really want to discuss is our pitchfork so we've mentioned this very useful one that we're clearly still within it's holding the trend to the downside um the other very important indicator now those of you that have been following the channel for a while will remember this pitchfork it, is, it was particularly useful following this trend to the upside and we could see the loss of momentum within this upward pitchfork um, but we actually broke the lower warning line down here again another reason for major concern but typically after you break a pitchfork you will often get a retest of the uh, lower warning line and that is what we're doing and you can see again it's acting as resistance so you've got resistance here of the lower warning line of our major pitchfork we've got two major camarilla pivots that's the weekly and the daily r3 camarilla pivots and then we've got the 200 week simple moving average huge amounts of resistance and then even on elliott wave we've got an expanded flat completion we've got a 335 to make that expanded flat okay so huge amounts of confluence suggesting why we're getting resistance i all also take it as far as looking at correlating charts in particular stocks where i'm also seeing a very bearish picture Again, that's going to make the video a little bit too lengthy, so we'll cover that in another video. Real estate also I've been focusing on very closely, and we're seeing weakness there. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see where I post occasional updates on those markets also. Um, so let's just take off that major pitchfork. We'll leave this one on, and this is a smaller fine-tuned pitchfork if we go in on the daily. So again, resistance, first, second, third pivots to create our original pitchfork steep gradient within an original pitchfork very classical uh, for impulsive looking price action but don't forget we had it as a c wave going up rather than a, a wave one or a three or a five um, and so we we're looking for a major reversal now my concern which i mentioned to the group was when we came beneath this median line in my opinion at that point we are really confirming the loss of the upward momentum Okay, so as you can see, we, this pitchfork has acts as wonderful resistance at the upper warning line time and time again. On Twitter, you might have noticed that I said that coming into the upper warning line, there's potential further upside, but I expect it to be sluggish. Okay, because, you know, as soon as you're near the upper warning line, the upside potential is, is minimized. Okay, now you can see the reversal coming in. We're coming beneath the median line. This is a, an impulsive move down. That's a sideways consolidation. We can expect further downside to follow. Okay, and I believe there may be another Elliott Wave count to this, not Elliott Wave, but Pitchfork. No, this was all the Pitchforks to discuss. Brilliant. So we've explained all the details there for why we're bearish. I've mentioned multiple reasons for resistance using Pitchforks, using Elliott Wave, using moving averages. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so with that said, so I've got that bearish bias right now. I'd say the invalidation for the bearish bias would be us I'd have to say coming above the 200 week simple moving average really which would be getting back above these highs so getting above let's say 25k that would be your invalidation for the bearish move now now that the bearish move appears to be on let's talk about potential downside targets and this is where there'll be always be a lot of disagreement there was disagreement when i've been bearish during this whole time slowly people have been more agreeable uh but now i'm just going to throw out further downside targets because i i mean it's been largely spoken about within the media that we're going to go through a recession in my opinion that is being downplayed it's going to be more of a significant recession than they speak of i think we're going to be washing out a lot of debt that lies within the system 
in order to allow for a greater um, rally of production to continue once more. I think all, a lot of these um, businesses that aren't particularly useful to the economy are going to end up going bankrupt. Uh, so that's going to take a while. And so, yeah, this WXY, which we'll bring on, is the major Elliott wave count that we're looking at. So let's pull that on. So the Y wave, where can we expect it to come down to? So I did mention earlier that a 90% retracement, that's the, the largest in terms of the uh, parabolic pullbacks that we've seen on Bitcoin. OK, so that would be probably the the biggest drawdown which i think is a reasonable target 90 percent drawdown brings us to around 6.3k also looking left you can see that level has been very important in terms of a, a level of value price hovered around that point for a very long time around here okay also acted as a very good support level here so very important level we can call it six and a half k down there the only reason it's important is if we look at the WXY, just using simple Fibonacci, uh, again, this is the log scale, by the way, very important when applying your Fib extensions, um, taking the move from this high down to the end of the W, and then we extend it from the end of the X wave, we can project a nice one-to-one -one relationship down here. Uh, again, 6.5K. Now, in terms of how long it takes to form, that that that's a little bit too early to determine, okay? But I've got it here potentially coming into the median line. It might come across into the upper median line. But let's say the median line. This comes into January 2024, okay? So that's about a nine-month move to the downside, which I certainly think is plausible. Um, I think interest rates are going to continue to go higher. Even today, Jerome Powell has said interest rates can be expected to go up higher than we initially expected. Inflation doesn't seem to be disappearing as well as we would have liked it to. So we can expect more interest rate hikes, which is going to put more pressure on the economy, uh, less people being able to borrow money, which essentially is required to power the economy. So a lot of companies, no doubt, will go bankrupt, especially having to pay off larger uh, loan repayments so six and a half k is a target here there's a 0.786 fib extension potential target that's around eight and a half k in my opinion though that that 90 percent retracement i think i believe that's it that's the most regular um setup most regular level with a lot of confluence around it it's the one-to-one -one relationship sorry relationship on the fib extension uh we've got a lot of value around here where it's hovered here for a long time we've got support here and then if i'm not mistaken if we bring on our camera pivots which as i said have been incredibly accurate over the last must be about five years now weekly camera pivots let's take off everything but i believe our s3 sits is at seven and a half so if you can imagine you know, you don't necessarily get these lines hit to the T. You can see a little push through here, push through here, push through here. But ultimately, they act as support and resistance. So let's say 7.5K is ultimately where we find support. A move to 6.3 would bring you to around here. I think that is personally tolerable. A wick down to this point and then quickly getting a weekly close back above your S3. That kind of move. So that is the kind of the regular lookout. I'm looking for resistance at the R3 coming down to the S3 for 2023, essentially. Okay, that's the play that I'm looking at. Invalidation is moving above the R3 once more because if the 200-week fails to act as resistance again, then it could certainly flip into support, to be honest. But I am expecting it to act as heavy resistance for this moment. So we'll see how it plays. But we've got our invalidation. We've got our target. I've given the reasons for the kind of bearish bias. So let's see how things play out. I probably will do a video at some point covering stocks. Uh, but check out my Twitter as well, where obviously I post occasional updates there also. So if you want to further your knowledge at all, do consider checking out my other video where I cover Elliott Wave in my five uh, video tutorial. Or if you want to further your knowledge even further than that and you know, get a, a grasp of everything that I cover, then you can check out my course, which is at wave618.com. Link is in the description. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Take care.